Greetings, welcome to another Scale Model Studios video painting guide. Today we're looking at Dystopian Wars by Spartan Games. And on the painting table is the Federated States of America Independence Class Battleship. I decided on a paint scheme that was a compromise between pomp and splendor and camouflage. And so, without further ado, let us begin. First we start with the undercoat. This is a very important process and allows the paint to attach itself to the model. We begin the paintwork with the decking. I decided to go for a starburst effect. That is light brown on the inside and a ready dark brown on the outside edges. Here you can see the olive drab is being sprayed. Airbrushing is much more efficient and effective as it doesn't have any streaks that you can get from hand painting and it is much quicker. Black is now added to all the recesses. By doing this we create good contrast and depth for the colours that will go on above. This will help to enhance and really bring to life all the copper and silver that will be used afterwards. Now it's time for the bronze. On the left, I'm using a dark copper to create the base. On the right, I use a lighter copper to create the highlights. Use a combination of bold brush strokes and some blending to create some really good effects. Remember that the idea is that these effects are viewed from a distance. And so up close, they may look a little bit strange. When applying the highlight copper, be sure to apply it sparingly, as it is always easy to add more, but much more difficult to remove. Painting the fine detail can be a lot of fun, and surprisingly easy. This is especially the case if a lot of the detail is on a raised surface, as is the case with a lot of the Spartan miniature range. This allows for various techniques to be employed, such as dry brushing, or alternatively, it can facilitate very accurate paintwork, as even if you make mistakes, they are much easier to correct. I should point out at this point that you may notice some errors that I've made. I spend considerable time off camera correcting these.
Late in the painting process, I decided that the model was looking a little bit bland. So I decided to add some zinc chromate. As you can see, I painted each alternate panel on the turret, as well as the paddle wheels. Overall, I was very happy with the result, as it added some variety to the model. When starting out a new miniature, you can experiment with different paint schemes. You can see here, I tried painting all the cross hatching red below the missiles. I found that this did not work. Later on, I tried blue, and again, I was not happy until I finally settled on copper. We have reached the final stages of the painting process. At this point the frames which make up the various aspects of the superstructure, as well as the rails surrounding all the decks, are painted a lighter copper. At this late stage, any final corrections are now made, and the model is given two coats of acrylic gloss varnish. This is used as a barrier against the enamel based ink wash. This part here is my favourite part. It really brings the model to life. Simply apply the ink wash liberally all over the model. Make sure every nook and cranny is catered for. Any excess can be easily cleaned up using a cotton bud dipped in thinner. I highly recommend that once the paintwork is complete, that two coats of matte varnish are sprayed to seal all the hard work. This is especially important if you will be handling the model during gameplay. There are many good products in the form of a spray can, however for best results, use an airbrush. <laughs>